What's up, everybody? Sir Phobos here, and here we are back in Subnautica. So, uh, today's episode, uh, this was going to be episode 6, and we were going to start base building stuff like that. I, I recorded it, I put it up, and it immediately started getting a bunch of hate. Um, so I rewatched it, and what everything got real chunky and choppy, the capture was terrible. So things were bad. Uh, so that sucked, unfortunately. Um, and in that episode, while we were in the base building, we got uh, another message from from the Sunbeam uh, saying they were on their way. Uh, we got their landing zone, uh, where they were going to land on the planet here, and uh, and we got a timer, uh, a forty minute timer started to count down. Uh, so a day in, in game is 20 minutes and they were two days out so we got a countdown when they were going to arrive so uh, I decided to check out the landing zone because I you know whoa sunbeams on its way fucking sweet <laughs> um, and the landing zone is the second island uh, the, the mountainous island uh, which is right over here we are, we are heading towards it now now on the mountainous island is the precursor array that we discovered uh which is super super cool and it's that facility apparently that you know uh suit made the game super choppy i don't know i was running through it because i had a timer so i'm sure that didn't help you know i wasn't giving the chunk super amount of time to load and stuff like that so unfortunately we discovered all the super cool stuff and uh the, the capture was garbage. So, I, I just loaded up here in creative mode. And I'm going to show off the precursor array and everything. Um, and then, in the next episode, which should be fine. I, I watched it. It didn't look bad. Um, it'll have the sunbeam arriving and stuff like that. So, here we are. We are at the mountainous island. Um, and this is the precursor array. So, here's some of it underwater. Here it is, on the surface, this just impressive, massive alien structure. It's, it's awesome. It's crazy, and it's awesome. So, when you, when you get the, uh, Sunbeam, uh, message, it's like, it's right over here, is where the LZ is. So, you know, they're, they're gonna land on this island, right here on the beach, right next to this big, uh, precursor array. So, you know, I am you know, just in awe of this structure. You know, so we we take a look at it underwater a little bit, check it out. It's super neat. You know, it's got all these compartments with tendrils, you know, punched into the mountain. It is super, super cool. So I figured, you know, we'll, we'll check this out. I'll go inside, because I, I did everything inside of it, too, which was super neat. Um, now, this is interesting. Now, in the original game, uh, I did not run across this guy. This is a warper. Nope. Oh, and he's going to run away. Um, but I, I loaded up here once in a creative mode just to see what would happen when I come over to the base and pretty much everything's the same except I don't have the uh, sunbeam arrival event active uh, and I don't think it go I don't think it activates in creative mode um, but that guy that weird little alien fishy was a warper and he he decided to take off so I don't know I don't know where they live but he was here on the when I checked it out on creative but oh there he is uh, but when I did this in the game, I didn't actually come over here by this, en this underwater entrance, which I'll show you inside the base. But he's he's an aggressive fishy. I, would, I don't know if he attacks the sea moth or not. Hey, will you attack the sea moth? Yeah, he will. He's a, he's a mean, scary-looking fucker. <laughs> um, and I'm super glad I didn't run to him in-game, because he scares the crap out of me. Don't... Get away from me. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> yeah, 
You can see him. He teleports around. Um, and he was added uh, in the last update, the creature update. And I don't, I don't know about him very much, other than he warps around, and he's got those terrible scythes, and he's very mean to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I wanted, to, you know, I wanted to show that. So um, on the other island, the uh, floating island, there was that uh, purple artifact that I forgot to pick up. And, you know, you come over here and you can scan this broken one. And when you come up to the door, this opens up. You know, it's obviously, it's the key to the door. Uh, now, I had forgotten to pick it up. So I just assumed, you know, and I didn't even realize it at the time. So I just assumed, oh, well, neat. Eventually, you'll find a way into the facility or something. Um, although, it does give you the blueprints to craft the, uh, the key. But it requires a... Uh, uh, an ion crystal, which, uh, you know, as, as you discover these artifacts and stuff, you have no idea what that is. Um, I, d I don't know if they're going to be naturally occurring in the game or not. And then it requires two diamonds, which also I hadn't found yet in-game. Although this island, you can find diamonds. Uh, you can find basalt chunks right on the surface. But so I followed this path up here... And I found one of those purple artifacts. Oh, fucking sweet, right? You know, it brings you to the top of the uh, the array here. And, you know, you can walk around and check it out. Uh, and there's a path that leads deeper into the mountain, which I've had, I haven't explored yet. Um, and then, you know, you can see the aurora over there. Not blown up quite yet. Um, so, you know, I... Oops. Come on, baby. So I picked up the artifact... Yeah, you because know, now I'm excited. It's like, oh crap, I can get inside the facility. So we're gonna we're gonna do that, and hopefully we'll get a, a better video of going inside. So we're just gonna slap this down on here. Now this place is super super cool on the inside. Um, in the original video, I mentioned it. It reminds me a lot of. Uh, uh, like the Borg stuff from Star Trek. You know, it's got, yeah, or uh, Necron stuff from Warhammer, if you're, <laughs> you know, I'll just keep spouting off more nerdy shit. Um, you know, just this very sterile, alien uh, kind of architecture with uh, like neon highlights. <laughs> Uh, but it's very cool, and like it's not, it's kind of weird. It's not symmetrical. Like there's weird things, you know, messing up here. Come inside. There's uh, a background message being broadcast throughout the facility, and somehow your fancy PDA manages to translate some of this alien uh, information. Unidentified craft in orbit of this planet will be destroyed. Fa prevent the rock lark from blah 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 blah. You know, you get a part of translation. Um, so to me, that says, oh, unidentified craft in orbit, that's the sunbeam coming in, and they're going to blow up my sunbeam. And I am, I am super, super bummed out. <laughs> um, so we're going to, we get to keep poking through this facility a little bit. It's very cool, it's well lit, and it's neat. Um. Coming down here, we see this bad boy. And lo and behold, it's an ion crystal. So picking that up, I realize, hey, I can now craft those purple artifacts, you know, if I ever need them. Which, as we get deeper in the facility, it turns out I do. Because I didn't pick up the one at the other base, I ended up having to, uh run back to the Seamoth, or uh, the, the uh, escape pod. Because I, I hadn't set up my base yet prior to exploring this uh, facility the first time. The craft one. And remind you, there's a timer going on all this, you know. Um, you know, the Sunbeam's like, make sure you're out there. <laughs> you know, we're, we're coming in. Um, so, you know, it gets on like 20 minutes. I'm like, oh shit, I gotta get, I gotta get some diamonds. 
Uh, I gotta craft this purple artifact. I gotta unlock doors. Um, you know, if I want to try to shut down this weapon that uh, blows up the. Because uh, we get a. Uh, it blew up the Aurora. Um, or shot down the Aurora. Uh, yeah, so the first terminal. This terminal was discovered within the alien facility that's shot down the Aurora on planet 4546B. On approach, it began to resonate, producing a low-frequency radio wave containing complex but recognizable data patterns. It matches no known technologies, constructed from the same off-world material as the facility itself. It seems to be a solid-state computer of some sort. No recognizable user interface. Uh, it is likely that the alien species which designed this technology evolved or genetically selected sensory apparatus to hear and understand information being broadcast by the device and to communicate back. The mental processing power required to perform this kind of telepathy would imply that the designers are considerably more uh, psychologically developed than the common human. Using the evidence gathered from this device, it may be possible to extract comprehen comprehensible data from other such devices should they exist. Um, and then it talks about the, uh, the weapon itself. Uh, so the facility houses the gun, you know, the precursor gun. This is the, uh, what shoots down the Aurora. And it is going to shoot down my sunbeam coming to rescue me. Uh, this data appears to be a multi-dimensional schematic of some kind. By mapping the patterns to three-dimensional spaces, it's possible to gather basic understanding of the super weapon's internal workings, which may help identify a way to disable it. So if we want to get off this island, we got to disable this gun. Because it is going to shoot stuff down. <laughs> the facility's unknown construction material is identified as an ultra-hard, non-reactive metal amalgam synthesized from off-world materials. There is no indication that it can be damaged or destroyed by known means. So obviously we're not going to be able to shut down the facility by blowing it up. Uh, the schematic indicates the weapon is, uh, was to be powered by a separate self-sustaining power plant located elsewhere on the planet. The location is not listed, but there is evidence the designers intended to harness the planet's natural thermal energy. Which made me immediately think of the inactive lava zone. You know, that is probably where the power plant is. So, barring failure to shut down the weapon here, I'm thinking that maybe we can shut down the power plant uh, and uh, disable the weapon and get off planet. Uh, the facility consists of an upper engineering section where the schematic was found and the and the control room, which is accessed via a security-sealed elevator shaft or a separate underwater moon pool. The control room is in the lower section houses the only known way to interface with the weapon. However, the schematic does not detail operation procedures or installed security measures. So on the outside, we saw the entrance to the moon pool. That's where the warper was. Um, and again, in the original playthrough, I did not uh, explore over there. I was too excited by the weapon and getting on land and stuff like that, so I didn't even pay attention. Uh, at least until I got inside, and then I saw the moon pool. Um, so I missed the, the warper completely. But he might have warded me away. Like, I might not have explored too much over there if he was hanging out. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he can actually damage the Seamoth or not. Um, I might go poke around over there while, once I get back in my actual game. And see, just, you know, for my own education. Uh, but this is the weird elevator shaft, you know. There's no way to contact the elevator so you step a little bit closer and you get sucked into it and you kind of float around it's neat uh walking around the facility made me really wonder what the precursors the the aliens um who built this up look like uh i i i figure they have to be at least vaguely humanoid because uh, the facility is sized and shaped very well for us you know people uh, I did comment how everything is ramps, and the elevator is a, you know, a floaty tube, so maybe they're terrible slug monsters. <laughs> Which, you know, might be the case. Um, you know, uh, everything here is aquatic, but, you know, obviously the inside of the facility is dry, so the precursors themselves probably aren't aquatic uh, creatures. So this was the one that I had to run back. So I got down here, saw this, I didn't have a key... I had to run out there, find some diamonds, construct a purple artifact, and then I, you know, ran all the way back in here. Time was ticking, you know. But then I got here. This is the moon pool. Um, 
right outside there is where the warper was, hanging out, being scary and mean. Uh, I did try to build in here. You know, I thought, hey, maybe I could just put my base in here, right? You know, that would be that would be slick. <laughs> just just inside here, you know, but you can't. It doesn't work. You know, you can't get a place to put it anywhere. So that's unfortunate. But you know, taking my time, looking around, but I was I was still hustling quite a bit. Uh, at this point actually I was I think I was running nonstop back and forth. And it caused a lot of uh ka chunks in the in the video. You know, things things didn't turn out well. <laughs> it became real choppy. Um Now there 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 aren't too many side paths. Uh, actually, there's only one, uh, if I remember correctly. Like, the facility is pretty straightforward. Uh, and it's right over here. Get another ion crystal. Um, and it's this little room here, and it's got another big archway in it. Like the one we found on the uh, floating island. Which made me think, hey... Maybe this is something used for, like, transportation. And that's how they got, you know, they, they would just travel between the islands. You know, from the facility here to the floating island for whatever reason. But, you know, I, I don't see any way to turn it on. But that would be cool. Or maybe it takes them off world, you know. Maybe that's how they left the facility. Um, I don't know. So it does have these ramps that lead up so we're gonna go follow this here put away my habitat builder um, I thought this was cool you know I didn't I didn't notice it the first time because I was hustling but stuff lights up when you get closer to it which is very neat you know it's <laughs> it's a neat little touch I like I like the precursor stuff it's very cool uh, there's another purple artifact over here which uh, you end up needing. So it does, it gives you two. Um, and you need a third. So if you're at the uh, abandoned bases from the Degasi crew, you can pick up the third and you won't have to craft any. Um, but uh, there might be other alien facilities around that you need the disabled doors and stuff in. So I think that's why they give you the plans. Or, I guess, if you don't find them. Because it gives you three ion crystals in here. Uh, the data entry for the ion crystal is pretty interesting, too. It talks about how it's a stable state atomic reaction. Um, and that it, it postulates that you could uh, uh, use it, uh, convert it somehow to get a escape velocity thrust uh, off the planet. So, like, we can build something to escape the planet so that's that's super interesting and cool so uh, it said beyond this door is the control room for the weapon so you know at this point I am stoked I'm like oh okay sweet we're gonna get in here we're gonna disable the weapon and something's gonna happen now I figured well shit the game obviously doesn't end here I didn't stumble across you know, a secret or anything like that where you win. Yeah, so uh, I thought originally this was going to be one of those self fulfilling prophecies. I was going to come in here trying to stop the weapon from destroying the sunbeam and accidentally cause it to destroy the sunbeam. Um, so you come up here to the terminal, hey, disable the weapon, reach out, give it a little press, but it's like, no, and it catches you. And this terrible little stalk comes out and stabs the shit out of my arm. Very rude. The control panel is broadcasting a message. Translation reads, warning, infected individuals may not disable the weapon. This planet is under quarantine. So boom. The planet is under quarantine. Apparently I'm infected. And uh... I can't disable the weapon. Alien data indicate the presence of a second facility elsewhere on the planet. Evidence suggests it is located 800 meters below sea level, approximately one kilometer southwest of this installation. 
information recorded to data bank. So that is what we get. Um, and I I think that information gels with where the inactive lava zone is. Um, so maybe this this disease research facility is in there. So this is you know this is defeat. You know we can't turn off the weapon. We're infected apparently. And I have no way to contact the sunbeam. So the sunbeam's going to come in. You know, at, at this point it was like uh, like eight minutes, ten minutes, something like that. It's going to fly in. and It's going to get destroyed by this gun. Total bummer. Um, but we get information of the facility. You know, deep underwater, uh, just a ways away from here. Uh, you know, I'm in creative mode, so I can't get hurt. Um, and it's a disease research facility, which makes me think either we're going to cure this horrible disease that the precursors left here, <laughs> or, I don't know, maybe we find the power plant and turn it off. Uh, maybe. I don't know. And then, you know, we, as good humans that we are, we will spread the disease that I'm carrying now throughout the galaxy and just ruin all life. Um, but you can see the disease on aliens here and the fish and stuff like that. It's the the green specks, I assume the the green chicken pox that uh, some of the fish you see having. Um, it's it's weird. You know, if this disease is so terrible and you know it kills everything, I don't understand how there's still so much life on this planet still. Uh, especially because the uh, data entry for the um, the original alien artifact that we scanned said it had been here for hundreds of years. So, you know, it, it's been a long time. And I was infected immediately, you know, I, I assume, when coming here. I assume that's intentional. I mean, in-game, you don't discover this facility for several days. Uh, if you're following the prompts and stuff like that. You know, in creative mode here, I went straight here. <laughs> um... So I don't know. Um, I wonder if that's what killed the Degasi crew too. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting stuff though. So that's pretty much where the video left off. I got it. There was um, a few minutes left, and in the next episode, like I said, we uh, it should be okay. I'll load that up, you know, tomorrow or whenever. Um, and it has the arrival of the sunbeam and all the, and whatever this terrible facility is going to do to it. <laughs> you know, I'm super bummed out. Uh, I also ended up starting my base just a little bit. I started it right here on the island, um, or right off the shore of the island. You know, I just come right out here and right where the seamoth is, I start building a base. Uh, because the island has a lot of, uh, resources it's close to this facility and it seemed it seemed like a good place so yeah it's good stuff so yeah I, that's all we end up missing in this episode uh and it was a little extra like we got to play with the uh the warper let me let me go see if he he keeps showing up there like if that's just where he lives now <laughs> he just pokes his head in and out over here because if so, that's kind of cool. Um, or maybe there's like a spawn trigger. Like when you get close to the moon pool. He comes out and says hi. Yeah, I think so. Actually, oh, I don't have a scanner, do I? I know he'll attack me. Oh, there he goes. Okay. It's deep and dark. Creepy stuff. I don't. <laughs> I don't like him. In creative mode, it's a little easier to mess with him because I know he can't kill me. But in uh, here's the moon pool. That's cool. It'll uh, it'll be fun being able to bring the cyclops in here. Um, and I assume the warper can't mess with the cyclops. But I guess I don't. I don't really know. I know the Reaper can't, so. Or at least the Reaper doesn't. I guess I don't know if the Reaper can actually hurt it or not. If it attacks it. I just know that it doesn't. 
but they're adding new they're adding new features every day. Uh, so yeah. Oh, what's this? Anything down here? No, the answer is no. Just a dark little cave. Ouch. Ouch. Okay. So, I'm going to call this episode here, guys. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll pick back up in the real Survive and Thrive stuff uh, next time. Uh, this episode was just basically exploring this precursor array. Um, and like I said, slapping down the, the foundation for my base, basically, down here. Um... So, I hope you guys don't mind. I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you think the Precursor stuff is super cool. Like I do. You gonna come at me, punk? Oh. Why would you do that? Hey. Did you... He teleported me out of the sea moth. What? That's interesting. I don't <laughs> I don't like that at all. He can pull me out of the sea moth. No, get away. Where are you at? I heard you. There you are. You punk. I'm gonna give you a take that, you jerk. Fuck you. <laughs> so the, those things are terrifying. Huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, I wonder if I, I have to get my stasis rifle and get a scan of one of those guys. Maybe I can learn something about them. Because <laughs> uh, I'm trying to not, you know, I'm not going to the wiki to look up how things work and stuff like that. Uh, if I can at all help it. Like, if I get stuck, you know, I might look something up. Uh, but it hasn't happened yet. And I'm trying to just go by, like, the patch notes and stuff like that. But... Alright guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Uh, goodbye.